Hello everyone. We are doing another live video today and Ignacio is going to be joining us very soon. This is going to be the third uh, video of IG Live introducing ourselves, the Heal Project, and what we do at the Heal Project. Ignacio, there you are. <laughs> Where are you? <laughs> I every time I'm on here, I, I am like, lost. I feel like a freaking senior citizen every time I do this. I'm just like, what? And you know what? That's not even a good thing to say. I feel just like no knowledge whatsoever of any of this stuff happening. No bad things to seniors. I'm almost there. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's. I don't know why it's so complicated. I mean, I consider myself someone who's comfortable with technology at least and yet i struggle every time yeah every single time i'm like where are you Redmi? oh my god <laughs> well uh thank you everyone who's joining us we are live again this is our third video uh, of the series of introducing ourselves the heal project the work we do and having uh, the tough conversations uh, that come up. And today is a good day to start that or have a conversation because today is Sex Workers Day. And um, those of you who are familiar with us and the Heal Project, the work we do, you know that we don't shy away from any conversations around human sexuality. The entire range of human sexual behavior fits within the work that we do. Uh, so uh, we want to take this opportunity to talk a little bit, a little bit more about what does sex work have to do with CSA prevention? Uh, what is it? How do they? Why are those conversations related? How can we even bring those close to each other? Right? I mean, like in a lot of fields, when we talk about sex work, it's like a super adult thing that is its own category. And then CSA, child sexual abuse prevention work, it's an diff entirely different different kind of uh, uh, activism at work. So Ignacio, we want to hear from you. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to, you know, I had a whole story to say, and then I changed my mind. I'm going to start something else <laughs> because, <laughs> because I said this yesterday. Um, it reminds me of the very first time I had a conversation uh, with my own child uh, when she was about... I would say maybe 11 or 12 or something like that. We saw something on TV and it was, uh, you know, there was a sex worker character in it. And she made a comment, like a very flippant like comment about like the, you know, just the idiocy of someone uh, being in that line of work, kind of. And that was, that was my in right there. We had the best conversation and continued that conversation about sex work, especially as I am, uh, I have been a sex worker, have experience with uh, different kinds of sex work. And so um, I asked her just straight off, I was like, oh, why, why do you think that? Tom, what do you think about, why do you say that about that person? And she's like, because, you know, and she was really sure. So I really just wanted to talk to her about that, that clarity she had about what sex worker was. And I was just like, huh, why do you think that? Where do you get that idea? I said, so, so what do you think if this happened? So I just started throwing all these things at her. And I was just like, what you're saying is idiocy is not actually. I said, it's much more complicated than that. And so we started breaking that down and then talking about the different kinds of sex work. Um, and so I wanted to start with that because to me, there is a clear connection to CSA prevention because it's just talking about sex. It's that idea of demystifying sex and everything about sex, that it is not a scary thing. It is not a thing that horrible, damaged people do or only married people do, right? The ends of two spectrums, <laughs> right? <laughs> but it is, sex is a natural thing uh, that humans do. And, um, and there are a lot of different ways that it manifests. So here's one way and let's talk about it now. Yeah. Yeah, well, uh, I know you have, you found a good definition of sex work. We were really looking for something that captures, you know, a lot of, uh, legally, sex work is defined very differently. Morally, it's defined very differently. Uh, so it really, like a lot of other complicated concepts, it can include a lot of things. But let's hear uh, the definition that you found. Uh, and yeah, talk about uh, that. I got it from Swap USA. And I like it. It's very simple. Very simple. It says sex work is any type of labor where the uh, explicit goal is to produce a sexual or erotic response in the client. Uh, sex work includes prostitution, but it also includes a bunch of other things like erotic dancing, pro-dom, pro-sub work, 
webcam work, sensual massage, adult film, phone sex, being a sugar baby, etc. And as a friend of mine who isn't me would say, uh, also marriage. <laughs> <laughs> That may be more of a controversial perspective. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think, uh, yeah, exactly. This, this thing always comes up as to like, what is sex work from a place of morality? A lot of times we speak about it, right? And uh, to me, my experience, the ways in which we talk about sex work is a lot of times very revealing of how we think of sex itself. Yeah. Right. It's like there we, ha we can have a lot of conversations about sex work as a line of work. Right. Mm -hmm. And talking about, you know, the, the, the economy and the, the capitalism and the, just the whole like service exchange aspects of it. But those are not really the conversations that we have around sex work is more about what it like, what is sex itself. Right. Yeah. And, and people talk about it like on one end, sex is this thing that has to be you know, super sacred for everyone. Everyone has to like save it for very special occasions. Right. And everyone has to relate to it in this like very narrow way, right? Um, and on the other end, it's like, no, well, whatever. Just like everybody has to just uh, want to have sex with whatever and whoever without feelings. And those are all, you know, the whole range of human experience with sex. But um, I, I, I think that piece of it, uh, talking about sex work, is a really good opportunity um, of actually showing everybody, but especially with children, with teenagers um, who are exposed to uh, sex work, either in porn or just in society and the concept of sex work, they can really learn more about how is it we think about sex itself. Right. It's like right. how the way we talk about sex work really shows that is like we don't think about we can look at sex as something always positive, something always negative or really something neutral that can be positive or negative right. for, you know, different kinds of people. Right. Right. And uh, I mean, I think the conversation, too, about sex work is so small, just like we like sex. Sex is put in this tiny little box and it's like this is sex. And if you don't fit into that then you're a horrible person and you're, you know, and then with sex work, it's like, these are the people who do sex work and you must stay away from this. And this is a horrible life to ever exist in and only broken people go here. And so it creates this, this narrative. Again, we are good at creating these narratives that really um, make us all fail, right? Because, and then it allows people to shun sex workers away without even knowing anything about sex workers, right? Like to say, you are horrible. I must stay away from you because I, I can't be associated with you, right? And then it doesn't allow for sex workers to get the resources or help or understanding or connection that, you know, they're supposed to get, right? And so it, it, it eliminates the entire conversation, the, the, the important conversation out of context, right? Well, the important mm -hmm. conversation here is, hmm, many important conversation. Why is sex such a, a, a like the highest selling like what commodity in the world, right? Why 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 is sex so? Why does sex sell so well, right? And why don't we talk about sex? That's a great conversation right there, right? Like, why <laughs> is it that um, pornography is one of the biggest industries, but we're totally afraid to talk about sex? Why do we conflate, perno uh, like uh, uh, sex work and sex trafficking? Why do we conflate sex workers and survivorship? Mm -hmm. Why do we conflate black trans women and uh, uh, prostitution? We conflate so many things and we make it so much more difficult for something that has to exist in a capitalist society. It's here, it's not going anywhere. It's existing. If, uh, it's a, to say that, to say that uh, sex work, um, to acknowledge, you know, like uh, the, 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 that sex work is legitimate is really to acknowledge that we live in a fucked up capitalist society that actually creates this, you know, the, the conditions in which people have to do this, right? Because we don't have um, the systems to support us, right? And so it, it, it takes the, the, uh, the focus off of everything else, systems and all that, right? And rather just the person the person who has to survive or, or anywhere on the spectrum of what a sex worker is, right? Some who have to survive, some who make that choice. And we can have a whole conversation about choice right? in, in this world, right? What is choice? Right, <laughs> right, exactly. And, and actually, like, I, I want to uh, add to that. 
that in my utopia, right, in my utopia, we don't have to uh, do survival work of any kind, including sex work. But in that world, uh, sex work doesn't necessarily disappear. I right. mean, I definitely want sex work to, sex work is part of my utopia. Sex work is, is sacred work, right? And it's, uh, or it can be sacred work. And mm -hmm. uh, in many ways, um, I know that it can be really empowering, uh, even in a capitalistic system, right? For example, you know, I might think I'm a really good cook or I'm a really, I bake really well. Uh, that's one level. And then if I get paid uh, selling the things that I bake, mm -hmm. it, it's a very empowering thing. Right, right. You know, it's like, it's very, it, I have this skill, like people want to pay for that. But unfortunately, People don't think about sex work right like that, right? Because uh, people look at sex work as a low skill mm -hmm. type of job. Um, and, and first of all, just like any other type of work, sex work, you can do sex work and it'd be very low skill and you can do sex work and it'd be very high skill, right? There's a, a lot of ranges of that. But sex work, be, to become really good at sex work, like it's, it's an actual career path. It's something yes. that can be really empowering even even for survivors you know even for, for any person who wants to like have that relationship and autonomy with their body but of course then we have survival sex work as well where someone if they had the choice maybe that's not what they want to do with their life but so is the case with like many jobs in our society exactly. today yes um and so yeah that's uh, that's a good you know way of i think this distinguishing between all of these and an opportunity to, to talk about um just the systems of working like mm -hmm. what does it mean for people to do different kinds of work and what does that do to you to your body to your soul right. when you have to do it for survival right, right? right. yeah I, uh, I i just want to say like uh, the i just want to say that there is such an importance for sex work to exist and then i mm -hmm. also want to say that there is definitely uh, uh, even within the 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 fight for uh sex worker rights that there is privilege within sex worker you know, um, sex worker work, right? So I've had experience in sex work, right? And I've done pornography, which is much, much more privileged work uh, than someone who is on, um, you know, on the street, right? And have putting their, their body on the line, right? And so, or that's the possibility that that could happen. And so um, there's that, but there's also the professionalism of uh, right, so there are there's many many types of sex work that people actually get degrees for, and it is okay to do that, and get a lot of money for. It. And thank goodness that that could exist, and yeah. we can't separate the, that from the work that that street workers, that prostitutes, <laughs> have created and paved the way for this to actually happen. Right, mm -hmm. and so those conversations cannot happen separate from each other because as sex workers on the street are being killed and put in prison and jails and all that, we have people who have professions that are doing sex work and being really cush and okay with that. So where's the connection and how do we support um, uh, privileged sex work supporting sex workers who need much more, um, you know, much more support? Right, exactly. And that's, you know, I was just reminded of a conversation I had years ago with a, with someone uh, around sex work. And at the very end of it, they were admitting that they were like, okay, fine. Like, you know, I can, I can make peace with sex work. I don't think it should be illegal. Uh, it should be fine. Like, you know, but we shouldn't talk about sex work as if it's uh, morally neutral, because then like, I don't want to I don't want my kid, right? They were saying, I don't want my kid to think that's like something they, they should do with their life or that's something they can do with their life. And I was like, that's very interesting, right? Because <laughs> yeah, like I don't want, honestly, I don't want my children or people close to me have to do any kind of job that they, they're not excited about and it's for survival and it's high risk. But sex work doesn't have to be that way, right? And uh, if we actually made the conditions for sex work to be safe, to be uh, risk free or low risk and to be something that is empowering and, and wonderful, I don't know if I would have a problem with a child right. of mine wanting to do sex work. Right. right? It's like, so it was very interesting about like, at, the, at the end of the day, I think people really think about the act of doing something sexual in exchange for as we were reading in the definitions, you know, money or goods, like at the end of the day, there is something really, um, really difficult to digest for people about that itself, right? Yeah, yeah absolutely. I, you know, I'm, <clears throat> I'm thinking about the just the wonderful, like, 
uh, benefits that sex workers, you know, have contributed to the freaking world, right? Mm -hmm. And just like, just benefit and benefits to individual people and and actually the families of those individual people, I would mm -hmm. have to say. And so I, I, I just got to say, like, I remember when I was doing um, pro-dom work, um, again, you know, uh, worked in a, in, a, in a space where there was, a, you know, a guard and, you know, people they felt, you know, very safe in this space. And uh, I had, you know, clients that my work was really about, you know, I was doing, you know, mental health work. I was doing counseling. Uh, most of my work was really like having these deep conversations with these men who are having such internal, uh, you know, issues about the sexual desires that they had, right? Or guilt that they could not ask their wives for this thing that they wanted. Um, and it was, it's really about this emotional labor. And I think I saw mm -hmm. one of the, uh, the definitions of uh, sex work and they put in emotional labor because I got to say that is like top mm -hmm. of the emotional labor. You think it's sex. <laughs> no, it's, it's like you are talking, you are performing, you are role playing, mm -hmm. you are doing some heavy lifting, some emotional mm -hmm. stuff like sex work is not like this simplistic little thing that people think of. And so um, this emotional labor, you know, that that happens, it's like intense um work and i lost my train of thought oh that uh, just the, the the things that sex workers have contributed to our society right is like um i also like want to name that uh sex worker activists are on the front lines of right now uh talking about the ways in which social media censorships are not only um impacting them but it's impacting sex educators and anybody who wants to talk about sex in a empowering positive way mm -hmm. right because the sex negativity has completely erased any uh and, and we talk we we, talk, we think about sexual oppression and why these things go underground if we can't openly talk about them right. if we can't have conversations and if we can't uh, do them in a way that is safe and uh risk-free safer and risk fear then um that's what happens right yeah yeah and i'm thinking about like uh you know the lessons around um, bodily autonomy, around how sex workers, you know, fight for their right against state control of their bodies. And we can make a lot of connections with other groups of people who have fought the same, including women, including trans people, including people with disabilities, including poor people, you know, fighting against the state constantly about, oh, can I use my body in this way? Thank you very much. You know, thank you for giving me the permission to use my own body. Right. And in this oppressive <laughs> system. Right. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but also the if if sex work were um, acknowledged, you know, and I, I you know, there's the conversation of like uh, uh, legalizing and decriminalizing. I'm for decriminalizing, you know, so in decriminalizing sex work, you know, it would reduce um, HIV. Uh, it would de reduce uh, criminalization. Uh, it would reduce violence, violence against uh, violence around from police to sex worker and client to sex worker. So mm -hmm. it would reduce all of these things if we simply decriminalize and then uh, and then have the proper information and resources and safer sex materials um, to just provide a safer space to do it in. Right. Mm -hmm. We're learning this more and more. We're learning more and more that these these harm reduction approaches, not these, these freaking cookie cutter, throw away black and white models that just don't freaking work. I don't even know why we're still here, you know, talking about this topic. I just don't even know why we still continue to talk about this and this conflation. The conflation is the shit that we have to really be careful about because then we have people who think they're fighting against child sexual abuse or something and really fighting against this, this, um, this very narrow view of work, legitimacy, and, and bodily autonomy. It's a much bigger conversation than just saying that woman is a whore. <laughs> so much bigger than that. <laughs> right. You know, I, you just reminded me of very interesting connections right there. Well, first of all, the whole idea that sex workers are survivors, especially survivors of childhood sexual abuse. Mm -hmm. And of course, it's very gender too. So like these women who are survivors yeah. of childhood sexual abuse become sex workers, but then very much the people who 
the higher sex workers are also deemed as monsters and harm doers and immediately like they are doing something they are creating survivors basically right, like right. it's like it's like the sex work dynamic by default is considered one of a, a violent one mm -hmm. by default so like if you hire someone you're a, you're a harm doer <laughs> you're a monster and if you're getting hired you're immediately just uh, you know you're surviving sexual violence because of it if you haven't already in your childhood or right. or in your childhood um which is you know the other side of it and and actually i i really want to like also bring up this conversation about people who hire sex workers mm -hmm. and challenge this idea of like who are these people right um like we a lot of times like oh like you know it, it goes back to the whole conversation around survivorship the harm doer just wants to it's, it's all about control and power they just want to control and power something you know it's all about that and it has nothing to do with sex and the same kind of uh, argument and narrative is actually around people who hire sex workers right, right. and those who hire sex workers are only interested they just have the money they just get get up on paying you know money for getting sex work and these are these monsters who, and like what is so wrong with wanting having a sexual fantasy or interest and desire and wanting to pay for it yeah how is that different from paying for anything else we want to do with our money in society mm -hmm. how does that make us like make that person a monster right right, right. and it's just and again all of that goes back to the way we look at men's sexuality and yeah. men's sexual desire is that by default men's sexual desire is problematic and violent and exploitative and there's just no way getting around that like we can't fathom a man who wants to have a certain type of sexual fantasy or role play or whatever he's interested mm -hmm. in to be like okay i want to experience this right i'm going to pay for it and i'm going to experience it and i can be a good person at the end of the day right. no right. scenario such yeah. like that right and they only see the 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 um <clears throat> the clients as you know a one particular type of person and i i remember having clients that i absolutely loved i used to love seeing them every freaking week i was like they were i just enjoyed spending time with them and our sessions were talking i had one client that used to just want to cuddle we just hugged for an hour and talked you know like so there were different kinds of you know uh scenarios but like that 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 shifts everything you know it's just, just it's yeah the the skill the skill set that it takes to do uh that type of work is is really really important and the uh i think the i i keep thinking about the the, the this kind of uh, parallel that i've heard about you know like sex workers and welfare mothers you know like mm -hmm. the way they talk people talk negatively and i'm like sex workers and welfare mothers have all the skills all the skills because they know how to stretch a dollar they know how to do this they know how to organize people they know how to take care of each other they know how to you know do all these types of things so uh, all of these wonderful skills that come out of oppression and come out of survival that we mm -hmm. can learn so much about you know um sex workers and continue to learn you know it's almost yes, inevitable definitely inevitable to be an activist if you are a sex worker because mm. there's so much stacked against you you know absolutely yeah there's so much more to talk about around sex work but uh we want to first of all happy sex workers day and uh we have some resources for you uh so that you can also do your own uh research and reading around uh, sex work and ignacio you have some good recommendation for us Yes, yes, we have a book that I wrote in uh, it's called We Too um and we're going to have this in um in the information below um coming out like a porn star which I wrote in as well there's a revolting prostitutes another book called I've got to make my living and this one is a, a racial analysis actually that um would be really interesting of sex workers in Chicago I think in the 19 early 1900s and then Sex Workers United a history of the movement of of movements from stonewall to slut walk uh and there's so much more there's so many organizations out there doing amazing work around sex worker rights so happy sex worker day and what are you doing to support a sex worker or to talk about sex work to a young person in a positive way think about that Yes, thank you. That's a great note to leave on. We will have this video with subtitles on our uh Instagram later today. So, I uh, hope to those of you who didn't get to watch the entire thing, go back and watch everything. All right. Bye everybody. Have a good one. Bye.